Thank you so much for that kind introduction, President Holsey, my dear friend. Uh, your advocacy for Indian country and your commitment to your tribe are an incredible asset to our country, and I am inspired by your leadership. Thank you again. Guwazi Halpa, greeting tribal, greetings tribal leaders and esteemed guests. I'm honored to be here with you and with my colleagues and friends to welcome you all to the Biden-Harris administration's first White House Tribal Nations Summit. I'm sorry that we cannot be together in person, but I welcome the chance to speak with you today virtually. I pray that you and your communities are safe as we continue to weather this pandemic. The White House sits on the ancestral homelands of the Anacostan and Piscataway people. I hope that the ancestors are smiling down as we take the next few days to work together on the challenges and opportunities facing Indian country. The fact that I'm making these remarks in front of you today feels like a dream that was envisioned by the ancestors long before now. My story is not unlike many of yours. I grew up in a military family. I learned what it meant to be a Pueblo woman from my grandparents, my mother, and my Pueblo sisters in our community. I worked hard in school. I struggled. I raised a loving child. I embraced my identity as a descendant of boarding school survivors and advocated for my community by organizing indigenous voters to increase our presence at the polls so that we would have a voice in our government's decisions. I knew even then that in spite of seemingly insurmountable odds, we are still here and we have a voice a parade of voices from around the country, speaking to issues that have been spoken of for generations, but which so often have been mired by indifference. Our voices have been given a new platform, and I am just one of those who have taken this historic opportunity to move past the days of inaction and apathy, to take Native issues to the forefront of policy discussions, and to ensure tribal consultation is the accepted way of doing business in Indian country. In 2008, I made an unwavering commitment to the electoral process by working tirelessly to register voters and to get out the vote for President Obama and Vice President Biden. I remember distinctly when President Obama first gathered tribal leaders here in our nation's capital to work on the important issues facing their communities. That was in 2009, and it was a breath of fresh air to see our people have a nation-to-nation -nation conversations directly with cabinet secretaries, administrators, and representatives from across the federal government. It is with that same commitment to tribal nations that President Biden reconvenes this summit today for the first time since 2016. It is with that same commitment that President Biden appointed me as the first Native American cabinet secretary and more than 50 other indigenous people in high level positions throughout his administration. And we have prioritized a number of early actions to strengthen Indian country, including historic investments in tribal communities through the American Rescue Plan. Our all of government approach to tribal consultation in which Native people are consulted before policies are developed, the unleashing of $1 billion in grants to increase access to broadband internet on tribal lands, and the billions of dollars that will begin to flow across Indian country thanks to the infrastructure bill that the President will sign into law today. This commitment also drives the work we do at the Department of the Interior, whether it's restoring tribal homelands and empowering tribes to make decisions for their communities, or putting the power of the federal government behind the work to address the missing and murdered indigenous peoples crisis and the intensive process we are undertaking to heal from the terrible impacts that boarding schools have had on our communities. These things are possible because Joe Biden is our president. The last time I stood with the president, he permanently protected Bears Ears National Monument. And I can't tell you what that meant to me. I don't have to because I know from so many of you that it meant the same. President Biden came into office at a pivotal moment for our country. 
It was a moment in which a global pandemic, the economic uncertainty that stemmed from that public health emergency, the climate crisis, and the impacts of historic marginalization and racial injustice were all at our doorstep. This administration understood that all of these challenges are intertwined and must be addressed head on. We also understand that we cannot address these challenges unless we partner with and honor our nation-to-nation -nation relationship with tribes. You all are the keepers of our traditions, the defenders of our resources, and visionaries for our future. You and your communities harness Indigenous knowledge that we need to help guide our government and our environment, not just across budget years, but across generations. This administration understands that tribal leaders know your communities best and that the right solutions are created when tribes consistently have a seat at the table. This week will be the continuation of those important discussions. My colleagues and I have much progress to share, as well as announcements about the path ahead. But most importantly, we are here to listen and to learn. You are here to share the hopes, dreams, challenges, needs, and goals of each of your communities so that our solutions reflect your input. Throughout this summit, we will host a series of panels across a broad range of topics that impact Indigenous communities, including combating COVID-19, Native American education and Native languages, public safety and justice, climate change impacts and solutions, tribal treaty rights and sacred lands, economic and work workforce development and infrastructure, housing and energy. It is my hope that we all can use this opportunity to learn from each other, expand our knowledge and build an even stronger foundation for the future. That foundation will be made up of the trust we build together the relationships we nurture, and the commitments to ensuring that our communities have a bright future for generations to come. Each year, this summit will serve as a milestone to measure progress, course correct where needed, and reconnect. I'm grateful to stand here on the shoulders of the many leaders who came before me. I know that I stand here because the path that many of you carved ahead of me was clear. I intend to work with and for all of you so that we can ensure that our children have every opportunity to achieve their dreams and one day stand on my shoulders to achieve even more of what is needed to help tribal nations grow and prosper.